A watched pot never boils. I think we're watching the damn thing. <laughs> we got stuff to do. Oh, my man. See what I had put up with today. That's okay. I, I know. I, I get. Know. Do I get sympathy from you guys? A little bit? Uh, sympathy. Okay, so... So, freezing cold outside, getting darker than usual. Yes. It is 8.22. And look, it's dark. It is dark. You know, we haven't had a good warming meal in a while. And I think we can do better going back to our second video ever. Number two would be the enchiladas. You are right. So we are going to bring this up, not only because we have a better camera now, better sound, Hopefully, we'll see, you know, editing. Anyway, the blue lights, I hope, aren't here today. That's true. <laughs> Last week was kind of creepy. It was. I'm not really sure why. If you don't know what we're talking about, watch oh, last week's on you. video. Yeah. Yes. Like and subscribe. Like also. and subscribe. Our last show, there was orbs floating all around Mike's head. Head and chest. Yeah. Anyway, that was weird. Yeah. So... What we're going to do, revisit enchiladas. We are going to be doing chicken enchiladas. You can also make this cheese and vegetarian. We'll be making some fresh black beans. And yes, I got the pressure pot out to speed things up. Oh, when we come back on In the Kitchen with me, Mikey, and my cameraman, Roy. Say hi, Roy. Hey, Roy. Took it long enough because you wouldn't quit looking at it. You know me, I'm very inquisitive. So, hey guys, tonight, like we were saying, we are going to go uh, south of the border, Tex Mex, um, trying to stay as authentic as we can. And the only reason we're doing this is because Roy has some tamales at home and he doesn't have any enchilada sauce. No, he wanted me not. to make some. They're in the freezer and they've been in the freezer for a few months. And so, finally, we're going to have some enchiladas. We are going to redo the enchiladas. Better video this time. And we're going to show we did the vegetarian the first time. This time we are going to do with chicken. Mm -hmm. You can also do vegetarian as well. Sure. Um, just use the cheese, which I am going to show you my cheese. Cheese. Cheekrit. Oh, yeah, I was trying to be funny. You are. Uh, I'm going to show you my secret with cheese. Um, making these. Um, really simple ingredients tonight. We'll be using onions, lots of spices, lots of garlic, and some different peppers. Uh, wajillo and... Wajillo. Wajillo and dried... For the life of me, I cannot remember Poblano. these. Poblanos. Thank there you. There you go. Could not remember. And those I did dry myself out of the garden. Uh, the wajillo peppers I did not I store by. So... I will shut my mouth and start cooking. Okay. First thing, we have chicken. Uh, we are using thighs. I think thighs have a little bit better flavor. I do too. And there is some fat on these. I like thighs. I like fat thighs. I don't want to lie. <laughs> there is going to be little to no waste in tonight's meal, which um, makes myself and Roy happy. Yes. For Roy, it's going to be because, well, there's lots more leftovers. Mm. So... The reason there is so much water in here, I want to make a good stock for not only cooking this, or our chicken, we're also going to make our enchilada sauce with it, and we are going to use, if there's any left, we'll be using some to make our rice. There's no reason to waste the stock, it's got a lot of flavor. At this point, if you even want to enrich it more, feel free to cut an onion, just wash it, don't bother peeling it. Cut it in half, throw it in there. Cut you a, a bulb of garlic in half, throw it in there. Some fresh herbs if you've got it. For what I'm using it for, I want it to be rather, I don't want to say bland, but I do want it to be rather, rather bland and just a little bit of the chicken taste. Uh, here are said wajillo chilies. Wajillo. We, <laughs> we want to uh, uh, reconstitute these. They are dry. They tend to look kind of dusty, but they're not. Well, they might be. I don't know. You're not going to use the water off of them. 
Okay, girls. <laughs> Ladies, really? Sorry. Children. You know how they are. My poblanos, I can these myself, or can these. I dried these myself, um, and I washed them a few minutes ago. Just going to cut them into a little bit smaller pieces. Don't worry about the seeds. These are not hot peppers. So to that, we are going to essentially make a tea and see if I can make Roy stretch. We're going to soak these for about 15 minutes or until soft. And that will be perfect because our chicken is going to take about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes to get, um, uh, I'll say, fork tender on this. You're going to shred it. We'll show you that. Um, over here oh, are the black yeah. beans that we have washed and gotten ready. Uh, our peppers are soaking. Our chicken is on. We haven't, we haven't started our rice yet. Our beans are on. I have to set the timer on here. We'll be back in about 15 to 20 minutes when everything starts coming together. The beans will take the longest, but I am cheating with the pressure pot. If you're using the Farberware pot, you want to use the pre-programmed eight. If you're using your Instapot, use your beans. Uh, bean setting. Use your beans. Use your beans. Hey, we'll be right back. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Don't forget, while you're waiting, it won't be long for you, but it will be for us. Take five, six seconds to like and subscribe. Yeah. And if you like what we're doing here, please ring the bell. Ding! You'll be notified every week when we put out a new video. Yes. Oh, man. If I had eyebrows, that would have taken them <laughs> off. I felt the heat. <laughs> okay, our beans are still cooking. It's only been about 15 minutes or so. Our beans are still cooking. The timer hasn't actually started yet, but they will be done before. Uh, our chicken is going, and to let you know, I used one pound of chicken thighs. Yes, I know you can see, and I know you can tell that that is more than a pound. I put in another pound and a half to make chicken salad later uh, for the week for me and Roy. Um, if you're going to cook something, try to cook it all up at once. It, I mean, if you can, if you're actually going to use it. And you can use something like chicken on three, four different meals. Um, and you don't necessarily have to use it at once. That's why God gave you a freezer. And, and just remember, too, uh, my, my thing is, four days, throw it away. Yeah. So my chilies have soaked for about 20 minutes. What I'm going to do is drain the water. Do not throw it out. We are going to be using it later. Like I said tonight, there will be very, very little waste. Look how rich that, um, if you want to say chili tea, go ahead. Ew. Now, this part will seem weird. I'm pulling them directly. Let's see about that. <laughs> Pulling them directly after uh, soaking them right into a hot, hot skillet. Mm -hmm. I would leave the seeds um, later. It's not going to matter. Just show you with that one. Believe it or not, this is going to brighten up your flavor a whole, whole lot. And anytime that you can get flavor in something, you want to do it. Mm -hmm. You are going to use oil in your um, enchilada sauce because you have to make a roux. Yes. Roy, will you tell them what a roux is? A roux is fat plus flour. And what do you use it for? Jumbo. <laughs> a thickening agent. Yeah. But the darker you get it. Oh, the darker, the, the, the better it is. And I know why he's hitting around about some gumbo. Yes. Why are we hitting around about some good gumbo? Because we need some good gumbo. Well, I'm not saying that'll be next week's show, but I'm saying that'll be next week's show. Best show ever. <laughs> Get back over here. So what I added to our chilies, and I did about four of each of the chilies. Um, that's a lie. I did four of the uh, 
Two of the Poblano and four of the... Oaxaca. Oaxacan. That's not right. Poblano? I'll have to look at the packages in a minute. Anyway, a total of four peppers, a half of a medium onion, and about two cloves of garlic. And you do want to do this in a little bit of oil. Oil will waken up the flavor, and you're going to be using the oil anyway, and we're going to be making our roux right in here. Why would I make my roux right in there? Because when I throw it into the big pot where the uh, chicken stock will be, I can use my burr blender and burr all of this up nice and thin and have a beautifully smooth um, sauce. Now, I'm going to omit this because Roy isn't a big fan. This is the point where I would shave about a half ounce of a very dark, bitter chocolate. Mm. A Mexican chocolate, if you can find it. Uh, the container will look something like this. And yes, I'm cheap. I buy things reduced. It's um, Abuelitas by Nestle. It's already got seasoning in it as well. Um, it's not a sweet chocolate by any means. It's very bitter. This has cinnamon, some other spices in it. Um, throw in about an ounce of it in here. Really good. Um, it would be the start of a mole. So, while everything is cooking and coming together, right now, you guys, well actually we're going to be taking a few minutes to cook everything. It won't be much time for you at all, but this is a great time, and I, I, I promise this is the last time I'll say it through the day. Don't forget to like and subscribe, like and, subscribe. and we'll be right <laughs> we'll be right back to in the kitchen with me, Mikey, and my cameraman Roy. Hi. See you guys in just a minute. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Oh, here we go. Are we back? Because I didn't yeah. hear a thing. Yeah. Oh, hey guys. You can't have enchiladas without tortillas. Yes. Super quick to buy. And have about as much taste as your sock. So, Roy is the king da, 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 da. of making tortillas. In here, we have about four cups of uh, tamal masa meal. Uh, it is gluten free, and I love how they put it on there. Um, this is just uh, all corn. You want to use a little bit of salt and some hot water. Follow the instructions that's on the bag. You may not have that brand, but I'm sure you have it on the international aisle. Most of the Walmarts have it. You want to work it into a feel. Oh, and um, please, watch on your ingredients and see if it's salted or unsalted. Um, this one happens to be unsalted. Roy and I found that out the hard way when we first made them. Yeah. And they were super duper bland. Um, I, to this, I added about a full tablespoon of salt. Uh, remember, with salt, always you can add more, but, but you can't take, cannot it take it away. And you know me, if you don't know me by now, you haven't been paying a whole lot of attention watching. Um, my measurements are not precise. I'm sorry, cooking is not science. This isn't... Um, Baking is a science. That's another story. Baking isn't cooking. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to go into that. You want to though? I know you do. Maybe. You want to knead this in and add more warm or, you know, mine's pretty tepid. Um, adding it in as it's needed. It smells like Fritos. It does. Um, you're going to want to let this sit. Now you're probably asking why we're making so much like i said earlier this since we're making the tortillas from scratch it does take time and it's just more time that we get to be here with you guys and get to be here with each yeah. other uh loosen up for a week at work i have i have a great job i'm not going to complain too much about it 
it's just the situation <laughs> and the people that we deal with is almost comical. Um, this is going to need a little bit more water. This holds roughly two and a half cups, but again, read the instructions for um, how much you want. I know roughly uh, this is going to make us about 30, give or take, tortillas. And uh, we are also going to make some extra tortillas to fry up for tortilla chips. Yes, you can make your own. Yes. Yeah. And if you're wondering, I hear people have a taste preference all the time between white cornmeal, and this goes with your cornbread, um, just white or yellow. I don't really have a preference. I don't notice that much of a taste difference. Traditionally, yeah, cornbread should be yellow. Give white a try. So, we are going to let this set for about 15 minutes before Roy starts getting his hands in it. One of our adopted babies is actually, she's not adopted, she's fostering here. Hopefully somebody will adopt her. Yes. Um, is just wanting some attention right now. I let her stay out of their play area. Remember, come and take a cat and uh, we'll cook for you. Exactly. So why, while our masa meal is resting, you want it to rest about 15 minutes. Just give, give everything a check. We're going to check my chicken. Check your chicken. When it gets, we'll imagine this is a fork. When it gets fork tender or spoon tender, you know it's ready. And this is tender. ready for shredding. So what we are going to do, make this super simple. Yes, everything I buy fits inside of everything. Makes sense. I've learned a lot hanging out with you. Yeah, when you press your space. Okay. So we are going to pull, pull our chicken out. Um, I did salt the water very, very little in here because we are out going to be adding salt to this later and in our seasoning. And again, you can put it in, but you can't take it out. Yes. So it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want to make a beautiful batch of anything and realize you oversalted it. Um, we don't need as much salt anymore. So uh, maybe if you just cut back, your family won't notice. Or maybe they will notice and just add more at the table. There you go. I hear our beans are relaxing now, so they'll be ready in about 10 minutes. Well, they loosen up, and when you pressure cook a bean, you don't get that thick gravy. Or, yeah. For lack of a better word, the thick soupiness on it uh, that you would just cooking it in a pot. But with black beans, we are, we also cooked a, pound, a full pound of black beans for just us. But there's a reason for that. Uh, I'm also going to show Roy <laughs> how to. I'm. Uh, you have no idea the things I see that I'm putting through. <sighs> but while these are cooking, um. Back up, we're going to use half of them for this dish, and I'm also going to show you guys a bonus recipe today. Um, again, it's all about waste today and not having any. Um, we are going to run these through um, a food processor and turn them into uh, black bean soup. You'll have to forgive me for that. Little Miss has wonderful, wonderful claws. Let me tell you, she was trying to climb up my leg. And no, I do not let my cats in the kitchen. You try to stop a kitten. Especially when you're filming. <laughs> so, over here, and this is something you can get ready now. I have one bag, 16 ounce of cheddar cheese. You will want to let this come up to room temperature. When we get back, I'll show you how to do the enchilada sauce. Season your chicken. Get everything ready to start rolling. We'll be right back. Hello, Roy. Way. What you doing over there? I am making <clears throat> tortillas. We have taken the matzah and mixed it with the water, mixed it all up, and I made it into balls. Would you say those are about an ounce? Sure. Give or take. 
however big you want to make your balls, believe me, I am not against that at all. You take that. Now this uh, Pacific press that we specific press that I have is not intended for flour tortillas. Only corn. Um, corn squishes better, I guess. But I picked this up on my last trip to Mexico, and it was a good purchase. Yes, it was. I love it. And Roy is really, really good at this. Hi. I am your tortilla man. <laughs> I can make them best. Yes, I can. While we were on break, I went ahead and shredded the chicken. Here is the broth. I got about two quarts off of that and a little bit more. <laughs> we have the cheese over here. I'm going to let Roy play for a little while longer with the tortillas. Si, senor. And then we are going to come back and start putting it all together. All to that's what you see. Yes. We'll be right back, guys. Roy's torti tortillas are turning out absolutely perfect. He has squashed them all. If there's a word that better fits, find it. I have no clue. So, these we do in a cast iron skillet. No oil, no nothing. Um, make sure you use a se seasoned iron skillet. You want about 30, 40 seconds on each side. That one's just starting to get there. And it depends on how you like them. I'd like a little bit of a softer cook on them because we are going to be rolling them. Rolling, but, rolling, rolling. <laughs> but there is a trick to that as well. Rolling. Water down a little bit of your enchilada sauce with some reserved um, chicken stock, beef stock, whatever kind of stock you choose to use. Um, and then dip your tortillas and start rolling them. I might do a couple of those like that for you. So in our pan, we're back, we heat it up, our onions, garlic, and chili, and that that I was looking for was Oaxaca chilies. When he, when he said Oaxaca, it just got my mind on it. But you do want these to set and really meld together, get um, really good flavor. We're going to make a roux. With this in here, I added about six more tablespoons of uh, oil. I do use or reuse my oil a lot. This is just uh, oil that I used to fry. I believe it was chicken in was the last thing that we did. It's already got some flavor to it, so I keep it, use it pretty quickly. To that I'm adding, or attempting to add, about equal amount of fat to flour. We're not gonna get a whole lot of color on this roux, but you do wanna cook out your uh, the rawness in the flour. It just has a, well, it tastes like raw flour. Take you, take you a pinch and you'll see what I mean. You do want to cook some of that out. And as you can see, you're not getting many lumps, but it's lumps really aren't going to be a concern right now because we are going to hit this with a burr blender. Yeah. <laughs> this is a more extensive version. Uh, if you watched my first enchilada video, you'll know that we didn't um, go 100% for, for scratch from things. Um, I, I think I used a beef stock or a chicken stock in that one. I can't remember. Um, but we didn't go through the steps of roasting the chilies using these. I think it would be a, a much richer flavor. And you can do it either way, a quick or not. And you let me forget that. Oop! Cook special. Perfect. But we'll work on those in a minute. We're going to continue getting the sauce ready. You want to cook that down. Oh. Now I'm going to add an additional tablespoon of flour. I may have put just a little bit more oil than I thought I did in there. This is the part where you want to start seasoning things. Using spices and hot oil really opens up your spices. Um, if you're not going to be cooking in this way, you can always, always throw in your spices in a hot skillet. Just dry, uh, dry roasting, I believe is what it's called. Your cinnamon, all of your warm spices, 
really great. Any of your powdered, for the most part, just make sure it doesn't have sugar or anything like it, because it's going to burn and make a mess. So we are going to start building our flavor here. Here I have powdered cumin. I'm going to start easy. This is just a smoked paprika. And this is a dark, dark Mexican chili powder. And there is a difference between uh, chili powders. Whatever your preference is and your favorite. Now over here, I have got one quarter of a jalapeno <laughs> that I pulverized. There is a reason I did this, even though I'm going to burr blend. This is going to mellow out. And, you know, it's an opinion. People say uh, it doesn't do anything. And you got to use your metal, metal uh, or pestle. Mortar and pestle. Yes. <laughs> Which I haven't used in a while. It is. Look at that. Look at that color on that, too. That's what you want. Almost the, almost the chocolate. You did good. Well, oh, thank you. Your room looks mighty good. Yeah. <laughs> this is holding all together. Back here, I also saved a cup and a half of the um, chicken stock. Probably get a little bit more before we use it uh, to make our rice. We're, you, we're incorporating all these ingredients into the same, I'm sorry, incorporating the same ingredients into different dishes. Here is the stock, and I got two quarts off of it, and if you see, that is a beautiful yellow color. I did not add food coloring. This isn't uh, from a mix. It's not the Vegeta. This is just chicken stock. We did not salt it. Uh, because I want to add that flavor in later. Here's the shredded chicken. Once we get this going, which, what am I talking about? Yeah! Yeah! I just said it. You did it. <laughs> I want about a quart of that, of the uh, chicken stock. To that, I'm going to add all at once. Plus my diamond. Don't know what that was. Oh. We're going to add uh, this room mixture with all of your peppers, onions, and garlic. We are also going to add our reserved for lack of a better word, chili tea. Waste not, want not. Start making, mixing this in. Hit it with a little bit of heat. You'll see it start to tighten up very soon. Those uh, chili peppers are almost disintegrated anyway. It's going to be really, really easy. Once this thickens up and we get our sauce ready, we will come back, show you how to finish your rice. One ingredient we haven't hit yet, guys, are beans. And, well, I'm not going to be able to get in there yet because I forgot to open the valve. But they are ready. The cook time on there was 31 minutes. One pound of beans, six pounds of water. If you soak them overnight, reduce your water by two cups. We will be right back and throw everything together. I gotta throw Roy over here on this on, on skillet duty to finish those tortillas. I'm on about. It's nice. Okay, we got the enchilada sauce just about ready. As I said, don't worry about lumps because we were gonna take them all out. And we have done that. This is about the consistency we we're gonna want. Um, a little thinner than honey, maybe. It is uh, typically a pretty thin sauce. Now we are going to use this burr blender again, so we're going to move this to the back. Move on to our beans, which is going to be our black bean soup. Now, I have reserved beans as well to uh, 
just eat as beans. To this, I have just a pinch of salt, literally just a pinch, which we're going to be putting in now because, well, I didn't put it in there. Uh, don't salt your beans while you're cooking them. Um, they tend not to soften up. I also have cumin, fresh garlic. Uh, it's about a tablespoon of cumin, fresh garlic, um, two cloves, and a couple of pinches of the same chili powder that we used. We're going to thin this down a little. You'll see why again. That's just a little bit of our chicken stock. Now over here, I did reserve just a little tiny bit of our roux. In with that roux were onions and garlic, so we're just going to bring it all right back into it. Just a little, you don't want the soup very thick at all. Do not worry about cross-contamination. Every ingredient is exactly, well not exactly the same, but each ingredient is shared within all of these dishes. Be careful when you do this. Um, yours may splash a little bit more than, than mine does. And you do not want this fully uh, pureed. You still want your beans to have a little bit of texture and identify what they are. What I'm going to do is turn this on its side so it can get a little bit more of that. And just let it bring it right into it. You see the consistency this is going to be? I've already figured this out a couple of times of cooking with Roy. Roy likes very, very thin soups. I like very, very thick soups. So I'm going to give him a break and cut in the middle in here. I served him some uh, split pea soup or lentil soup. And um, he said it was like mashed potatoes thickness so he didn't like them. I'm going to encourage him to try them again. This is also going to be the first time Roy has tried this. And our soup is perfectly thin now where we want it. We're just going to let that stand in the big pot. We know it will. Back here, I saved about a cup and a half of water for rice. Now this is just, or it's not water, I'm sorry, that is the chicken stock. Again, used in a third dish. We're going to throw some rice in here. It's about a cup and a half. This is basmati rice. The rice that, well, Roy and I absolutely oh love. Gosh, yes, it's so good. It don't need no seasoning. Just cook it up and it's ready to roll. Uh, I believe, now it may be in my head, I know, but I think this rice cooks up a whole lot with a whole lot, or um, with a whole lot less water. In total, I've just added complete three cups. Put it on as soon as you see steam or as soon as it bubbles. Turn it to at lowest setting. Wait 15 minutes and you've got perfect rice. What I was doing when I had my little episode catastrophe in dropping things, I was getting some beans for the soup. Now we are going to serve these beans separate. Um, throw in cilantro, some raw onion, uh, red onion if you got it would be best. Um, again, carry over your um, cumin and maybe a little bit of chili powder. Throw in. Mix up and how you would top this, a little bit of shredded Mexican cheese and cilantro if you like it. And I highly recommend fresh onions. I know the Food Network will tell you, we hate raw onions, we hate raw onions. I'm sorry, I'm country as hell. I, I eat onions with my beans. Th and it, it's the best way. If you guys have had them, which we are going to do a pinto, a full pinto bean recipe soon. Um, these are some other items that you can use. I really didn't get into it. Um, most of your enchilada sauces are not tomato based. They may look red, but they're not tomato based. Um, uh, all your color you usually get from your chilies. I'm using completely dried chilies that I dried myself. So the color's a little darker than usual, I suppose. Uh, you can serve any of this with lettuce. And of course, Roy's going to do his magic shortly. 
we're still missing something. The enchiladas. Yes. This is going to be a very long video. Don't worry, I'll edit it down to an hour or two. So, what I'm going to do now is get a ladle. Ladle, ladle, ladle. Oh, and sorry. Ladle, ladle, ladle. And then I'm going to <coughs> not know what I did with my good ladle. Where's your ladle? Okay, when you can't find what you need, which I just found it, I'm going to use my Turkish coffee pot. If you can't get this all together, improvise. <laughs> uh, you will get a skin on your enchilada sauce pretty quickly. Don't worry about it. Just whisk it down. I've got, I'm going to guess, a cup and a half of enchilada sauce. We aren't going to use it all. We're going to work on our filling now for the um, enchiladas. See, I should have plugged in my mixer sooner. I should have, I should have plugged it in. It's locking. In here, um, I have 16 ounces room temperature cheddar cheese. Um, cheddar, I just find, melts the best. Uh, if there's something else you like, a stringier, by all means, use mozzarella or even string cheese and skip the step completely. You would just roll up your string cheese with it, but I'm telling you, that's going to be bland. Bland, bland, bland. We don't like bland. <laughs> In here, the 16 ounces, I put about a cup of um, chopped onions. And I gotta tell Roy, thank you, because every time he cuts my vegetables, they're always perfect and the right size. Well, thank you. So you wanna put in a little bit of your enchilada sauce that is cooled slightly. Just a little bit. Start your mixer. I should have used the bigger bowl for this one. But I didn't. The bigger bowl is going to come into play here in just a minute. And that's going to be about all you want right now. Mm. Knock that off. Get your larger bowl, which I happen to have on deck and ready to go. That's why I said I should have done this. Uh, started, but I really wanted to get that cheese in. So, this step that we are about to do is optional. You can do all of this by hand. If you can make it easier on you, do it. What we are going to do since we're making chicken enchiladas, if you want to do a vegetarian, um, leave out, of course, the uh, chicken stock, use vegetable stock. Everything else is good. Since we are not going to make just cheese, and I know sometimes you have picky eaters, people that won't eat meat, but they'll usually eat flavors that go in it. We're going to put about half of our chicken in there with the cheese. Tease it for a few seconds. Let it go for up to two minutes. You'll see the magic happen. Roy, show them how it all comes together. I got to check our soup. That was good enough to uh, build these snack up or tea over there. Oh, yes, sir. You know what? I think there's a broken issue. <clears throat> we won't have to need it. Waste not, want not, y'all. And this is what this show is about. Yes. This particular episode. Reusing. All, I, don't, I don't like using that word, reusing all of your ingredients. But using all of your ingredients in more than one dish for the same night. Yeah. You know, go Mexican all the way around. Mm, it's happening. <laughs> I'm rolling the enchiladas now. And if you guys want to do um, store-bought tortillas, that's okay. Go ahead. I don't know. You can skip this step. Just get you a little bit of oil. Um because they still need to be pliable. Uh, I would keep it on a skillet, um, not more than about 200 degrees. Just drop it in, pull it right back out. You can even lay them in the back. And as they cool down, just start wrapping them. There's two ways to do this also uh, with your cheese. You can wrap it into your uh, one, about one ounce cheese logs and stick them in the refrigerator on a tray. We're going to eat these. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, this really does freeze well. 
individual components as well as fully together. And I, I can't see, if you're going to go through the trouble of mixing this up, getting it ready, make a lot. Um, throw some in a freezer uh, for one of those days when you don't feel like cooking. Pop them out, 30 minutes in the oven, you've got dinner. We are going to finish rolling these up. And now would be a good time to preheat your oven. You want to preheat it to 350 degrees. Keep in mind that these are already cooked and we're still doing these relatively warm. Um, so it's going to heat up very, very quickly, maybe 15 minutes in the oven. And then you will have dinner. We will show you once we get these all panned up and doctored up with a little bit more cheese on top. And we will let Roy do all of his magic and make my food look beautiful. Mm, and taste good in my belly. Well, see, I make it taste good. <laughs> you do. Because there's one ingredient I cook with that most people don't. Salt. Love. <laughs> I'm a loving person. Mm. Ain't I? Yeah. Yes! Oh. Unless you get in front of you with the uh, right blinker on and you turn left. Does that, come on, does that irritate anybody else? Um, forget the fact that people don't use their turn signals. Um, they're just out of blinker fluid. Yeah, that's true. But the real winners are the ones that turn on a left turn signal and turn right. And for some reason, I see more than my fair share of those people. If you were one of those people, stop. Stop. I would rather not have a signal than to guess where your ass is turning and you ain't. Mm -hmm. oh, that'll get you hit because somebody goes around tries to go around you not realizing you're going the opposite way go ahead hit somebody just saying yeah just saying so what we're going to do is going to continue rolling all of these up uh, with what we did we did enough for about 36 we are not going to make that many I'm going to send Roy home with some filling and some enchilada sauce because he wanted to toy around with it himself and see what he can come up with. The rest of the chicken, I might, if I'm feeling it here in a few minutes, I might do a little mini video to tide you over until the following week or one day when we're running late or something and show you all how I make my chicken salad. I like it. But like I said, when I'm doing stuff like this, I try to do it in bulk. Um, save yourself some time. Uh, this chicken is going to end up being two different meals, um, two completely different meals. Um, the chicken salad and then this. You can even save some some more of it. Um, this is kind of along along the same line. But quesadilla, or yeah, quesadillas. If you have picky people, uh, where you just have flour tortillas on hand, use what you got. When it comes to your flavorings. This is going to be very intense with garlic, onion, and cilantro. I'm sorry, garlic, onion, and uh, cumin. I'll think about it in a minute. I don't know why I'm getting that so messed up today, but I am. So, give us just a few minutes to finish rolling these, which, well, you know, they're almost done. But i got to pull a couple of things out of the fridge. One of which I realized I forgot was cilantro which is pretty bad because all, <laughs> all, all of your Mexican-style meals go really good with cilantro. Unless you're one of those people that have the really weird... Um, I don't know if it's an enzyme deficiency or, or um, a weird protein strand. I can't remember. But one of them makes cilantro taste like soap to y'all. Yeah, I feel sorry for y'all. We are going to stop right here. Beep. And I am going to do a quick wash on my hands, come back, get this all ready. By then our oven will be preheated and ready to go. Toss them in. Roy's going to do his magic. We'll be right back. We're at the end, I promise. Yes. The enchiladas are done. Now, I did run out of cheddar cheese and decided to throw some mozzarella on here. If you can get cacique, uh, white Mexican cheese, um, queso fresca, anything, your favorite cheese. Come on. This is your recipe after all. I'm just taking you wrong on a 
on the ride. And I'm enjoying the ride. 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, you want it to heat up through. Our soup is ready. This will be Roy's first time trying it. I wish I would have rem remembered the cilantro. Our rice is done and has been, Look at but that. that's. Isn't that pretty? It's basmati. I swear by it, guys. Mm. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Trust it's me. Flavor in it, too. Every time, about this time, the ice maker drops. Uh, we have our beans out, which we'll, you know, we'll serve them if we want, um, if he wants them. And he is going to be so happy going home with his that. enchilada I'm sauce. Excited. We have the chicken that's going to be turned into chicken salad. Onions, that's what's left for garnish. All of our uh, ingredients got reused. <laughs> when we get back, everything will be done. We'll have it plated up. Roy will do his magic on the enchiladas. I'll do my magic on the soup. I thank you guys so much for stopping by my kitchen, our kitchen, your kitchen. Should that be my tagline? Nah, I ain't trying to be that cheesy. Y'all, thank you for stopping by. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Let me get them bets out of my belfry. Don't get them out too much because next week's our Halloween show, so we need as much bats in your belfry as possible. Okay, well. Maybe a different bat, but you know. Maybe I like the cobwebs. And next time I cue you, let me wipe my nose. Don't get upset if they don't come out all in one piece oh, like you it. want. Oh, they're cheesy. Super duper cheesy. try dragon fruit. Now I have had the pleasure of trying this not long ago. Uh, Roy has not had it before. Never had it. So it is a very beautiful plant grown in Florida, native to the Americas and tropical areas. It is a cactus, and you guys, you should look it up on Wikipedia, because we just did. Um, it's very pretty and a very unique plant. So, Roy is about to murder it. <laughs> and see what lies inside. Now, these can come in several different flesh colors. I'm going to assume this one is going to be white. It's okay. Oh, this way. Please, no. I get. Yeah, I've never cut one. I bought one. Maybe I did cut the last one. Roy did find some interesting information on these, though. Um, it's a touch bit high on the carbohydrates. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Ooh. Why do y'all see how pretty? Are you ready? You're avoiding the carbohydrate. It's 80, 82 percent carbs <laughs> for a thousand. Uh, no, hundred grams for hundred grams. Uh, we weighed this before we cut it. It was 648 grams. Of course, not all of that is going to be edible fruit. Um, I do want to look up and see what we can do with maybe the outside of this. I don't know if the whole plant is edible. So, Roy, do not do a habit and stick that in your mouth because people are going to say something about cutting your lip off or your tongue or something. Sorry. When I had it, it didn't taste like much of anything. It tastes like a creamy kiwi. Here, you should have a bite again. I could dig this. If I'm not mistaken, passion fruit has a similar uh, similar look to it's it. It's not bad at all.
This is sweeter. What I'm what I had may not may have actually been passion fruit because what I had was actually crunchy. This is not nearly as sweet as a kiwi, but yeah, I would definitely put it in there. Almost a um, I don't want to say a creamy texture because it's not creamy, but it has a very unique soft look at that. Just like a very soft flesh. I'm pressing very lightly and it's starting to break apart. Um, a little melony, a little peri. Is that a word? I know a girl named Melony. I know a fellow named Perry too. It's getting late, y'all. We have been doing this since about 8 o'clock today. So it's like, what, five hours now? Yeah, it's one. Um, we've taken a lot of little breaks. But, of course, you know, our chicken took so long to cook. And Not to beans, mention the beans. Yeah. 30 minutes on a pressure cooker. But you don't need to know but that. That's okay. This is really good. I, I highly <laughs> recommend dragon fruit. Well, that is one that Roy actually likes. And, no, we didn't do the big intro because we knew we would like this one. Or at least it wasn't as bad as the durian. Oh, nothing as bad as that so far. So we're, we're going to take a break. But if you guys have any suggestions for things to try, by all means, send yes. it our way. And we'll, we'll be honest. If it's good, if it's not. Um, this, Your I, would, I wouldn't miss it if I don't have it around. But um, it's not bad. I'll tell you what it would be good. Freezing it and then eating it like a slush or like some ice cream. It probably would do well like that. Well, guys, we both thank you very much. I'll pan around. Hi. We both thank you very much for stopping by again. We'll try not to keep it so lengthy next time. Me, Elizabeth, Roy. Hey. Bye. Oh, my God. Y'all didn't see that on his teeth. Y'all have a great day. Oh, these are black thoughts. Smile. Oh, they're gone. <laughs>